some of the OG fans may remember this little ditty. Uh, this is Skittles. This was probably the second or third go-kart we ever had. Well, I sold this puppy, and then one day my brother-in-law called me and said, hey, I bought a go-kart. Can you do some upgrades to it? And look, look what he bought. So what we did was we slapped a 440 Duro Max on this thing, uh, electric start one, but he didn't want to spend the extra money for the battery and you know making a harness and stuff. Uh, so we just kept it like this. Well, soon after he realized how bad it sucks to pull one of these big hoss of the engines over. Uh, so he wants me to add electric start to it. So people's been asking me for a long time, um, how do you add electric start to one of these engine engines? Like how do you wire it up? So we're gonna go through it today. So we went ahead and had Lonnie uh, break up a bunch of metal, cut up, and I welded it all together. So we got a nice little battery box. We're using a deep cycle battery that I got on sale at, I think it was uh, Northern Tool. So that's the only reason we're using a deep cycle. Um, pretty simple, you only have a few wires to worry about, especially if you're not using headlights or anything, which is not. So we go over to the weld table, we have all of our wiring stuff set up and we'll go through it. So I have a bunch of stuff laid out here on the weld table. We have a battery hold down from Go Power Sports. These are super handy because guess what? They hold down your battery. And I don't like to make them out of metal because it can start eating into the top of the battery. So here's the deep cycle battery we're using. You can see, got it on sale. We're also using four gauge wire. And the only reason I'm using four gauge is because if something happens that he was a flood the engine and he has to sit there and crank it over a little bit, eight gauge can get a little hot and start melting the insulation on the wire. So I always go just a little bit bigger with four gauge. You can buy this wire in our affiliate links down below the video. And uh, it's pretty good. It's copper clad aluminum, which is literally copper coated aluminum. It's not the best stuff in the world, but it's affordable. And let's face it, we're working on go-karts. So uh, I would rather use real copper, you know, tinned copper wire, but uh, again, go-kart so it's cheap. So you can find in the links, I think 25 foot of black and 25 foot of red. It's handy to have this stuff. Uh, so we have our hot right here and our ground right here. Then uh, we need a key switch. So we have two key switch linked down below. One is from Vegas Carts. It's my favorite. It's a really high quality key switch. Or you can go on the Amazon links and get this part number 263-5668. This is a John Deere lawnmower key switch. Uh, only reason I don't like it is they're just, they're not as premium as the Vegas Carts one. But this is the one we're gonna show you the pin out to today. We also have some marine heat shrink. So this has hot glue inside of it. So when you, you know, melt it up, it basically seals everything from water being able to penetrate under it where standard heat shrink will let water go through it. Especially since we're using copper clad aluminum. The bad thing about this is copper corrodes so if water was to get this, it'll end up corroding and just deteriorating the aluminum all the way down. Because this aluminum is so thin strands, like if you leave your go-kart out in the rain, this stuff will be nothing in like a year. So just keep that to note. Try to use, you know, real copper wire. We have a few uh, solder on ring terminals for our four gauge. Again, everything you're gonna see is linked in our affiliate links down below. We got some crimp on. Uh, wiring terminals. I use this style. I crimp it on and then I solder it because it's a connection I know is not going to come loose, but you can use just a standard crimp uh, kind, of course. We've got some thick solder right here for the uh, ring terminals, and then we have some thinner stuff for our little, our smaller terminals. Then uh, we, we're going to be using our Milwaukee M12, not sponsored, um, soldering iron. I love this thing because it's so handy and it's portable and it works extremely well. I think it will melt solder in like 10 seconds. So that's pretty awesome. And we're only gonna need, for this certain wire job, we're gonna need four wires. I used a blue, is gonna be my starter signal wire. Uh, a black is gonna be ground, just ground to the chassis. Then my white is gonna be the kill switch that goes to the engine. And yellow is gonna be a constant power. So this hooks straight up to the battery. Now we can add a red, that would be an accessory because that's the thing I like about this key. It does have an accessory which means when you turn the switch on, it opens a circuit to allow power. So what you could do is run that circuit to a toggle switch, and then that toggle switch would power a relay or headlights. So the headlights would go off when the switch is off, even if you left the toggle switch to the headlights on. Hope that makes sense. Um, so that's why I like this switch and the Vegas cart switch, is because of the fact that it has an accessory on and off. So, like I said, four wires all we're gonna be using. If we was using headlights, we would have more, but this is just the electric start part of this vehicle. 
We also have our multimeter, and you're probably not going to need one of these because I'm going to tell you what the pinout is on this. If you notice, this thing has letters beside each terminal. So it has letters beside each terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this out, and on screen, you can see beside my head right here what each letter means. There's an M, S, L, G, and B. So right here, it's broke down. And how I test for that, I'm going to clamp it in the vise because it's going to be a little easier. There's a setting on this multimeter. You can see it's beeping because these both was touching the table. We're going to touch the table. So when these uh, are on a circuit that's open, this is going to beep. So the switch is off. If you notice, this one has a little piece of copper. This is going to be a ground because it's grounded to the body of the switch. So we can test. That's going to be our kill switch. So this side would run to the wire on your coil. This one would run to a chassis ground. So that's G would be ground, M would be to your the kill switch wire on your coil. We know that because if we turn the key on, now the key is in accessory, and we touch those, the circuit is not live no more. So that's gonna be our key, or our kill switch. Then we need to find out which one is our hot constant in. So B and L is open when the key switch is on. So what we need to do is turn the switch over like we're starting it and you'll see that goes off so the accessory goes away so now we need to find out which one is the starter so if you see i moved that from from l to s so basically l and b is going to be your accessory b is straight to the battery so this will be live all the time uh, you don't have to run it on a switch power because if we move it to the s and turn the switch over you'll see that S will be your starter wire. So that's our pin out to this. That's how we find it out. So now I can put my, my spade terminals on here. You know, on my wires, it's gonna plug up to what we need. So that's what we're gonna start with. Go ahead and turn on the soldering iron. I always use these little vices from Harbor Freight for a drill press, because it's super handy to hold your wires. You can buy helping hands. We'll link those down below they're always aggravating me for some reason but i'm gonna go ahead and crimp all these on first get my wire twist and i've already pre-stripped these by the way this is the key switch side of my harness you can see i got that all crimped on there so it's ready for solder i'm gonna go ahead and crimp all the spade connections onto these wires this is going to be to the back of the key switch all right so when i'm soldering i always tin the tip and then lay it on there and that's going to transfer the heat into the connector and then it's almost like you're welding wires you're just giving her a little dab a dab will do you so that is all soldered up super strong the reason i solder all my connections is because i've had crimp connections that you just crimp when you go to unplug this harness from the key switch it'll pull the spade connectors off the wire and that drives me crazy so i went to soldering everything a long time ago and never have looked back it's been amazing because i never have to worry about a connection coming loose you can see again i just tin the tip and then once you tin the tip like I said, that's going to transfer the heat from the soldering iron to the the connector and preheat it real quick and then you can just dab uh, the connector with the solder and also make sure you keep your soldering iron clean uh, i keep a little brass brush from benchmark abrasives a discount code and links are in the video description but it's super handy just to clean it off you know every few uh connections you solder just to keep the heat transferring quickly and keep everything clean just want to make sure all the solder is getting down into the copper below the crimp connection uh, just to make sure it's that's a solid unit now the wire will break before this connection breaks so now I take a short piece of that marine heat shrink and I slide it over top of my spade connection because now I can heat shrink this down and that protects anything from touching these spade connectors. I always use a little torch lighter and you want to make sure that this is just a hair bit past the end of the spade connection because this heat shrink does shrink of course once you heat it up. Go at it from all the sides evenly heating it you don't want to overheat one spot because you can melt the heat shrink now 
Now we have a waterproof connection that we're not gonna have to worry about ever breaking or uh, coming loose. Okay, so now we're ready to solder on our four gauge to our ring terminals. I always buy the closed in ring terminals. Now you can do this two ways. I fill my ring terminal up with solder. That's why I have this larger um, solder with rosin in it. So I fill it about halfway full and I heat this up with a propane torch. The other way you can do it is just, of course, crimp this really well. I just like soldering because I never have any issues with it. So I take a propane torch, go ahead and spark it up. Put the torch directly on the ring terminal. Once it heats up, it'll melt the solder and we can fill it, we said about halfway full, maybe a little more because there is uh, rosin in this, resin. Dip it down and let it cool. Now that connection will never come loose and I can slide some heat shrink over it. And now we're ready to install our harnesses on our cart. All right, so you can see the harness that we made earlier is hooked up to our key switch and we just put our key switch in the original spot for the kill switch. So we have the ground running down to the ground side of our battery and we also have our four gauge ground hooked up here running back to the engine as well as our hot to our starter. So the white, yellow, and blue wire is running back to the engine and the ground that we talked about is hooked up to the battery. Here's our starter and this is our starter relay. So basically what is happening, when you give 12 volts to this blue line that we have hooked up to our re relay, it's opening this circuit to allow power to run through it. So we have 12 volts all the time to this side, and this side is pre-wired to the starter. So it's just opening that circuit and allowing power to move through it to the starter. So we have that blue wire from our key switch hooked up there. We have our 12 volt constant hot hooked up in the same place as our hot from our battery on the relay. Then our white wire is ran to our coil kill switch wire. So basically on these engines, how you're killing the engine is you're grounding out the ignition coil so it can't provide a spark to the engine anymore. So that's what that wire is doing is when we turn the key switch off, it's, it's looping a ground to ground out this coil. Now we have our ground from our battery hooked up to our engine plate here. And also we have a short ground hooked up with it that runs right up here to our block. So basically our block is grounded to the chassis and our chassis is grounded to the battery. That'll give us the perfect grounding setup. So now if we turn the key switch over, that's accessory mode again. We didn't go through that on this video. Now if we turn the switch on over, she would fire up. This has old gas and it. it's been sitting a while, but so that's a very basic wiring harness setup to hook up the electric start on your engine. On the next video, we're gonna talk about the charging coils, how to hook them up properly to charge up your battery. So right now, the way this is hooked up is he's gonna get no charging from his engine to his battery. We just did a basic wiring harness just to do the electric start. So he would have to trickle charge his battery or hook up the charging system, which we're gonna go over in the next video. Also, after that, we're gonna do a video on how to hook up headlights or any kind of accessories, radio, or whatever. So uh, we didn't wanna put this all, cram it all in one video. This is much easier to look at. You can understand one simple function of the whole wiring harness instead of cramming it all at you at once. So make sure to use our discount code on Duromax engines. It is uh, RBG20, that'll get you 20% off engines and pressure washers. Right now, the uh, generators are hard to come by. So our discount code isn't working on that, but that is for October 2020. You can use uh, RBG20 to get 20% off these 440s of V-Twins, any of their engines, pressure washers, and drop cords, just not the generator. So make sure to check out our links. We also have all the parts from Go Power Sports. We use these V-Tread tires, front and back, new live axle. You can look at the old video to see what we did to this thing. This was an old Murray go-kart that we did the big block swap on. Looks like a tractor, reminds me of a Old Massey first and with them big tires on it, but uh, we got the hydraulic disc brakes from Go Power Sports. A lot of good parts linked down in the description, so check that out. That does help us to continue to do videos. And let us know what you think about this video. We'll have the rest out in the next week or so. So uh, we hope you enjoyed them. We love you guys, and God bless.